What up, what up, what up? This is Ibn Webb, Ibn Webb, Karana Sum here. Official thanks thing going down here. A pleasure doing another Essex County edition here. First, I wanted to just say thanks to uh, Mr. Frank McCree just for helping me out as far as getting this guest I'm about to get, get on here. Like I said, that's been one of the joys of this, people reaching out saying, making some suggestions or just having some comments or what have you. You know, all. Well, you know, I appreciate it all. I appreciate all the good, bad, the indifference, what have you. That's just how, how we grow. So with that being said, I'm um, just going to get into this. John McGriff, East Orange native. Just uh, going to get him on here's journey. I'm just I'm looking forward to this. So hold tight, everybody. There we go. There we go. Nah, um, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. Um, like I said, this has been... It's been a blast. This has been a blast. So, like, um, people such as yourself and everybody else, like I said, true, true joy that this has been. You know, you just never know. Sometimes you things come around you ain't looking for. So, um, so, so it's been cool. Cool. Great, and, great, man. Nah, I appreciate the time and you just taking time out to do this here. Um, I know busy schedules. And, you know, though retired, but still busy, which is great, which is totally great. What all is, I mean, um, are you originally from East Orange or? Yes, yes. Um, my, uh, my, my, my dad and, and, and family uh, is from Orange. My mom and family is from Jersey City. Uh, we grew up in East Orange and I had traveled around uh, with my company um, for 15 years and I, I had an opportunity of coming back to Manhattan so I pretty much knew where I wanted to land, and and here we are in South Orange. Okay, okay. Nah, interesting, interesting run here. I mean, um, between Orange, East Orange, and all that, how how's your how's your childhood? If you just uh, describe it, I would describe it as um, in uh, I've I've been known to say a, a, an urban uh, Norman Rockwell. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You know, if if. Uh, uh, I, I had a, 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 a very good uh, childhood growing up in East Orange. I, um, you know, when we moved back in, I'm only 10 minutes from our, our homestead house, which we uh, actually kept in the family and, and sold it to my sister's son. So that's still in the family. And, um, you know, the friends that I have, um, I still keep in touch with a lot via Facebook. Uh, we were kind of like a... Uh, destination point our house was as yeah. as kids um, yeah, i know i know those houses <laughs> yeah I, I give an example we were we were a block from martin stadium now called robertson stadium on clinton street right between hamilton and springdale and we had a very large long backyard now we had a football field down the street and a baseball field down the street but we played football in our backyard all the kids came over and um uh, you know, my mom and my sister would like serve lemonade and iced tea, you know, that type of setting. Yes, yes. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, it, it was great. I have an older brother by four years and a twin sister. So it was the three of us. And uh, I, I also would describe it as kind of like a, uh, a Donna Reed. Uh, I'm sure you appreciate that uh, old, old sitcom uh, that was... Uh, on TV back in the 50s and, and 60s, where you know my mom was a housewife, and my dad worked, uh, so it was that type of a scenario. Mm. Then even, even with that being said, here you mentioned playing football in the backyard here, like your involvement in sports, neighborhood-wise, whatever. I mean, what was your draw to it? Oh well, uh, well, I I was a not not as much of an athlete as my brother. My okay. my brother uh, played three sports at Clifford Scott. Uh, football, basketball, and track. He ran the high hurdles. Um, I, w I ran track, high hurdles, and uh, JV basketball and played all four years of football at, at Scott. Um, and, uh, you know, he went on, Gary went on to play for Montclair State. Uh, and uh, I, I wound up taking on a uh, mechanical engineering track after graduation, went on to Northeastern. I uh, thought I wanted to be an engineer, uh, finished my freshman year, went out on co-op and uh, said, ah. then I went back for my sophomore year and started getting into the core curriculums. And I just, I just said, 
nah, this is not me. And I called my dad on the pay phone on the, on the dormitory floor. I said, dad, <laughs> dad, this isn't me. So, you know, God bless him. He said, Hey, it's, it's, it's your life. Um, mm -hmm. you know, just let me know when you want me to come up and get you. And, uh, you know, that was pretty much all that was said. And I came back home, uh, worked for Canada dry, mm -hmm. uh, packing out grocery store shelves in Staten Island, Jersey city. And, um, did that for two summers. And then I was flipping through some of my old, some of my brother's old college bulletins up in the attic. I was, I was doing house stuff and I picked up a Montclair state bulletin book and I started flipping through it. And I saw a curriculum that kind of struck a nerve and I uh, signed up for Montclair state and graduated with honors in Montclair state. And while I was there, I, one of my professors tapped me on the shoulder and told me about an opportunity with Kodak mm -hmm. and uh, a summer program. I applied for that and I got that job out of Manhattan. They were only hiring like six people in the country. And wow. I got that wow. job and um, that turned into a, another summer opportunity because I was an education major mm -hmm. and uh, I had my last, I was a, I finished up in December uh, doing my student teaching that that last Friday before that year's Christmas, that was 1979. New Year's Day, I had a I had a piece of luggage in the back of my car driving up to Rochester to start my career, and that was uh, 43 years ago. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, it was uh, you know, people were looking out for me. You know, one of my professors in high school, uh, he was a mechanical drawing our instructor, Arthur Wright. God bless him. I was, uh, and here's, here's, here's the, the power of the neighborhood, right? I was, uh, I hadn't seen him since I graduated from high school and uh, or maybe off and on just passing because he lived a few blocks from me. And I just happened to see him drive up Hamilton Street and I was coming down Lincoln Street on my 10 speed and uh, he pulled over, we got into a conversation and he said, what's up, what's up? So I said, I said well, I'm about to, uh, go into my student teaching. I need to find a high school and, the, and a teacher to study under to get my, uh, my, my student teaching uh, obligation satisfied. Mm -hmm. He said, you're, you're doing it under me. I said, what? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. He was, a, he was an industrial ed teacher at uh, Franklin Township mm -hmm. High School. And uh, that's where I did it. I mean, God bless him. That, I, as I mentioned, I said, that was a conversation made in heaven that landed on my shoulder. Yes. Now you commuted back and forth down to down Franklin as, as a student. Yeah. Not, yeah. On a, not on a 10 speed though, right? No, not on a 10 speed, man. In fact, he, <laughs> Art, Art lived a few blocks where so he and I rode together. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it was, it was perfect. And, uh, you know, I, uh, that was my teaching experience. But, you know, when I graduated, uh, I had the, the Kodak job waiting. So I, I went on to Kodak and uh, just went on to uh, start that career. And I actually taught, taught in the training center for new employees, new salespeople. So, uh, and I had a variety of jobs over the past 43 years. And I just retired at the end of December. No, job well done. That's what, that's what they say. And it sounds like just even being at, being at Kodak, how was that as far as just, just getting your foot in the door and starting oh. there out of all places? Well, I can tell you, me and a buddy of mine were riding our bikes in Montclair, mm -hmm. and uh, we stopped at the Montclair bike shop, and uh, we walked in, and there was this, uh, there was this car, it was a sedan that was on my mind for sales. I said, that was like a, a salesperson's car. We walked into the bike shop. My buddy had a Winston Salem University windbreaker on. Okay. There was a brother inside the bike shop uh, in a suit, and uh, he saw my, my buddy's windbreaker, and... Uh, he got into a conversation. One thing led to another. He said he worked for Kodak. And I said, I have a Kodak appointment with uh, Bill AC tomorrow morning. He mm -hmm. said, oh, Bill AC is my manager. So, you know, things just happen, right? So, um, but it was a great experience. Uh, I, I met some great people, uh, great mentors. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I was a dude from, uh, from East Orange coming up there. And one guy uh, pulled me away and he gave me a book. Uh, John Malloy, Dressed for Success, read that book, went to Men's Warehouse, got my wardrobe together. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. 
And again, going, going, going back to East Orange, you know, we are with, with Gary being the jock that he, that he was. And he also taught swimming at the grammar school across the street from the house. So he, I mean, he, he taught for years, phys ed, uh, you know, we have some, um, I'm a, we, I guess we would say we're a Fred Hill disciple. We are a Ed Lyons disciple. These are icon coaches from Clifford Scott and Uppsala. We live right down the street from Uppsala. So a lot of the teachers in the sports side that uh, came over to Scott were actually, you know, students of Uppsala. Uh, so they were all local guys, men. And, um, you know, the, again, going back to this normal Norman Rockwell view, the team would walk down from Scott to Martin Stadium. And, uh, you know, as, as kids, we would hear their metal cleats and the band would come down and my mom would say, go upstairs and get the pom-poms and we're on the porch. I mean, it was that type of thing, you know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was a great experience. It was a great experience. Now, eventually you, uh, you got your turn at Scott. I know you taught, you mentioned it brief, uh, briefly as far as just getting to Scott and being not only a student, but you got a chance obviously to be on on the playing field. How was that for you? Just that whole transition to high school. I mean, oh, it was it was great. It was great. Uh, you know, I was uh, Gary's little brother until maybe I finished my sophomore year. Again, he was out uh, when I was a uh, he was a freshman in college when I was a freshman in high school. Okay, and uh, you know, he had a he was a student council president and all this and all that, and. Uh, but uh, have some very good friends. We had some pretty good teams. You know, back then it was a Garden State Conference. You know, it was a really neat conference. You know, all the schools that pretty much were not too far from the Garden State, Roselle, Roselle Park, Rumsman, Fairhaven, Carteret. Oh, wow. okay. Um, you know, uh, I can't remember all of them, but uh, we, did, we did pretty well. We had, uh, we had a pretty good team. Erwin Sloan was our, was our coach. He went on to East Orange and coached East Orange for a few years. Mm -hmm. uh later on um and then what happened was uh okay when i went back to montclair state uh i played jv mm -hmm. i played one year of, of football at, at j at, at montclair state in the jv and rick giacola who was my fifth grade ashland school teacher by the way you got the reconnections uh, a lot. i got the reconnection man yeah, I tell you. Yeah. That's, I, yeah. yeah so so um you know i i was Six three, a hundred and eighty. I was a little light, and you had some uh, bigger guys, faster guys uh, on the team. So I was, I was okay with my with my one year at, as JV because uh, mm -hmm. that uh, then I started focusing on on the, the books and became an RA in the dormitory in my senior year. You know, it was it was great, great experience. And then again, I rolled right into uh, Kodak. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my my two boys, that's where I really kind of sprinkled the stardust to make sure they had the best opportunity uh, mm -hmm. to, to fulfill their sporting dreams. And they did very well uh, here in South Orange in, in youth uh, baseball, youth football. And uh, I, I give uh, praise to, you know, the, the two or three years ahead of us and the two or three years behind us as far as the ages, because they were two years apart. Okay. And uh, the, the, the moms and dads, we were a real nice group, did anything for the guys, pick up, drop off, um, refreshments during the games, you know, it was, it was perfect, you know, and uh, during the travel ball, you know, drive with another parent and I'll catch up with you because I got something to do at the time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> things like that. Nah, so, it takes a community, it's a community thing. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah. Now, interesting. You obviously becoming a father. You, now it's just the two, the two sons. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Mar Marcus and Matthew. Uh, mm -hmm. Marcus is my older. He uh, he will be thirty-one this month. Uh, he um, uh, played baseball. Took the baseball track. He danced with football. He wished he had to play football and baseball in in uh, high school, but he fell into the, uh, the baseball track and uh, did some uh, travel ball uh, during, during that. So he, he spent, he played two years for Montclair State when he graduated high school. And uh, now he manages a boutique gym here in South Orange. 
Okay. Called D- DNI Fitness. If you don't mind me dropping that. <laughs> no, yeah. not at all. Not so at he's all. he's uh he's still very very physically fit. He's a professional trainer and okay. uh, he's doing very well. And uh, Mark Matthew, my younger, he stayed with football. He didn't play. He stayed with baseball. He didn't play football until he was a freshman in high school. Okay. Because he was okay. playing baseball all those youth years. You know, I'm schlepping these guys to the camp. Yes. And, and, and things like that. And uh, he had a very good career at, at Columbia. He was captain of the baseball and the football team. Uh, they went undefeated as a senior. Mm. Uh, and uh, he, he uh, got picked up by uh, Hobart and William Smith College mm. up in uh, Geneva, New York. Mm. So when that letter came, you know, inviting him to do a weekend, you know, we were familiar with Hobart because we, we lived in Rochester. We moved here from Rochester. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, you know, we, you know, Hobart lacrosse is D1, everything else is D3. And uh, she said, you know, that'd be great. That's a beautiful part of the country. And uh, he loved it. He, yeah. he loved it. And he went on to uh, play then. He was a captain uh, of the uh, co-captain of the team when he was a senior. Mm-hmm. And uh, his his senior year, they were the most winningest team in school history. Mm. They went undefeated from a freshman uh, to uh, to being a senior. Those four years were the most winningest four years of any class that came through. Yeah, that says something. That says a whole lot. <laughs> so that was a lot of NCAA, you know, postseason uh, uh, games with he uh, being up there instead of at the thanksgiving table here yeah cool. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah just to talk about your boys how much of a joy is it i mean though you athlete yourself or just to see your offsprings just doing so first that they enjoy doing that they love but just doing stuff that you used to do i mean you know what, how, how was that for you uh we're we're uh we're a sports family uh mm-hmm. and and the other element of all this is that my dad lived with us for 10 years and so they had full exposure to my dad. He passed away a year and a half. And uh, he got to see both of them through their high school and through their college. And he would, you know, we would play Ithaca or RPI mm-hmm. or, or WPI. And he and I would hop in the car and drive up to see the game. And, you know, all the parents just adored him. You know, he lived to be 95. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, everybody could appreciate seeing a grandfather you know see the grandson play yes and uh, it was just a beautiful thing and um you know those were lifelong friends uh and i i still am involved in the school i was the the cheerleader the guy with the megaphone <laughs> oh yeah the, you did the megaphone thing <laughs> oh i did the megaphone thing yeah oh. after every after every touchdown uh it was the whole board you know give me an h give me an o give me a b oh, okay. give me a t and you know the whole crowd would, you know, be into it. And I, I did, I, I did it, I think probably over 200 times. Oh, uh, so, uh, I, I got kind of known for that, you know, uh, <laughs> and, right. uh, I was, you know, recognized in the, the school bulletin, you know, uh, they said, you know, uh, you know, the fan zone <laughs> article. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah, I, I maximized it and, and, and Matthew understood why I was doing it, mm-hmm. you know, because it brought, the team together uh it brought the, the parents together you know and sometimes you need that that sacrificial goat or lamb however you want to describe it to be the focus and everybody just chimes in you just they just allowed me to um you know kind of steer that ship uh to uh make sure that uh you know everybody was enjoying themselves yeah. no definitely it, it's an event it's an event yeah exactly Exactly. So, you know, I, uh, man, you got me uh, <laughs> Uh-oh. thinking about nah, that. It's, it's not, nah, it's all good. I, being a new father, I, I get it even as young as my daughter. So I, I get it. I'm going to be, I'm going to be probably terrible later on. So I'm well aware. <laughs> well, good for you. Congratulations on that. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so going, going back, you know, the thing about Matthew's experience, I mean, very, very tight group. As a matter of fact, one of his fellow, co-captains uh is Ali Marpet 
And uh, Allie um, was drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And matter of fact, he just made the Pro Bowl this year, number 74 offensive guard for Tampa Bay. And, uh, you know, every time his dad goes to the game and sends pictures up on Facebook, we all say, we're rooting for you, Bill. <laughs> you know? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So really now, re excellent experience. No, 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 definitely here, Dean. You talk about being a sports family, too. You have to be, the, I believe, the great nephew of somebody that oh. us particularly in Orange know about. Yeah, yeah. Um, Monty Urban. Yes. Yeah, Ma Monty, uh, he, uh, he we, I kept him in touch with the, the guy's progress. He always uh, had words of encouragement. Mm -hmm. uh, he, um, um, Gave him a couple of baseball mitts, you know. Uh, um, yeah, I, I had a ch I had a I had a business trip in Houston, so I had a chance to actually visit him. Uh, and we went out to dinner, and you know, my dad was kind of the younger cousin, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and uh, yeah, when when he was in town, he'd call, and they would go out and have a bite to eat, and that was great, and. And matter of fact, uh, the family had asked me to um, officiate his pat his funeral, his uh, homegoing okay. uh, celebration at SOPAC, the South Orange Performing Arts Center, which was an amazing ask. Honor, oh, yes. Absolutely yes. amazing. But I, I think, you know, he saw what I was doing and I guess that was a, a reward. You know, Patty and, and Pam asked me to do that and uh, I was absolutely honored. Mm. absolutely honored yeah, really nice guy stand-up guy you know if you ever have a chance to read his uh, autobiography uh, nice guys finish first it's mm -hmm. a good read mm -hmm. and uh, he talks about you know family talks about you know his trials and tribulations and but uh at the end of the day you read the book yeah you know, he had a very very good life mm -hmm. uh and was rewarded by you know working for Bowie Coombe in the uh in the office after he retired and was a was a um, you know a flag bearer for for national baseball and the Negro League. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let me not say that. Yeah, definitely could have been the first uh, African American baseball player, but he had an injury and he knew he wasn't a hundred percent. But you know, you look at the Jackie Robinson; they were looking for that that person with those ingredients, knowing what they were going to be stepping into. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, he was he was in the in the running uh, f for that, uh, but had a, had a great career with the Giants. And, you know, he's in the ring of honor uh, at the Giants Stadium. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I always, just... I always wave by when I see his, Absolutely. I see his, his statue there at the uh, former Orange Park that parked is named after Bonnie Irvin Park. Yeah, just even just somebody homegrown to go through all. We can only imagine some of the things he went through, you know. Um, but still, open the gates for a whole lot of people, you know. Um, just the sacrifices people make. I mean, sometimes they don't get recognized as much as they should. Though obviously they didn't do it for recognition; they do it for to make changes and you know create a better world. So, no, nah, that that's just that's fantastic. Well, I'll give you I'll give you a story when they when when the executive. Um, Essex County executive approached him to say, so we want to name this park after you. And it's the only park that's named after a person in Essex County. Mm -hmm. You know, Mon Monty said um, he, he didn't, didn't care for the idea and he had a stipulation. I'll do it only if you promise to keep this park pristine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause I've had, I have things like that happen and all of a sudden the park, goes downhill. As a matter of fact, at the time, the park across the street from Orange High School, former Orange High School, was, wasn't even available for the team to play because it was condemned. Mm. And so he Central stated, playground you talk about. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, so the executive worked with the school board and said, listen, man, you, you, you got to get this park tight, okay? Mm -hmm. Because Monty Irvin won't allow his name to be on the Orange Park unless it is. And, uh, and we, we, we Essex County promised to Maintain and and Joe Defensento has done a great job with all the parks in Essex County. I mean, it's unbelievable how much he has done for the youth and uh, the upkeep of the parks. Yeah, he's a sports guy too. I think. So. Oh yeah, Westside quarterback, Westside. 
Yeah, he was, yeah. I think, older than my brother, a year older than my brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so no, definitely a vested interest, not only just because the position he's in, but he, he played in these parts. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking of parks, I'm and I'm gonna say, in football fields. Like, how was the full, how was the joy of just playing every Saturday back? You know, on those Saturdays, as far as as, as Scott. Well, let me start by saying, in my youth, you know, I went to Ashland, and Ashland is no longer there. And uh, when you were in Ashland and you looked out the windows to see the Panthers, East Orange Panthers practice. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we just did. You know, they were in their blue and, and reds practicing, and that was our view. And, you know, the old Martin Stadium was all concrete, kind of a horseshoe uh, type of design. And, um, you know, it was definitely old school, right? And, and as a kid, on Saturday mornings, it was like the Giants were coming. Anybody, yeah. that, anybody that was in that era when East Orange played, you know, my dad's buddies, we had a long driveway and his buddies would come in and be car after car after car after car and car parked in the driveway uh, because all the street parking was gone. And um, yeah, it was a big deal. So that whole energy of sports in East Orange definitely carried through. And, you know, uh, you know, our stands were pretty, pretty nicely packed. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we played Orange on Thanksgiving. Uh, that was the big game, you know, and the thing about it at the time, I didn't realize how many relatives and cousins were in those stands from orange. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, and I got to meet him and actually we we're very good friends and common church and things like that. But, you know, it was um, a great experience. Great experience. Yeah. And did even, cause Scott, did you, yeah, I never, did y'all play East Orange? I mean, I, mean, I know no. y'all wasn't in Tate Conference. I don't know if y'all scrimmaged or something. No, no, no. East Orange was group four. I think we were group two or group one. We were very small. Okay. I mean, our, our my graduating class was like 165, where East Orange it might be like 450, something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Orange, uh, early on as a JV and freshman, we played Valley when Valley was a, a high school back then, Valley High. Um, See, who else did we play? Uh, but 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 uh, you know you had East Orange Barringer, and yes. uh, and you had Orange, and that's what we did for Thanksgiving: Orange and Clifford Scott. Yeah, and then even just in that time, but I mean, sports was big in this county. Like it was a big thing. Like these high school weather football, no matter what it was, and just being a kid and being a teenager, get the chance that you mentioned East Orange Barringer, like or you mentioned all these other stuff that's just going on it's just a good time to, to be a teenager i'm assuming back then it was absolutely a great time to be a teenager and kind of like the uh to that point you know when mark when matthew was going through recruiting we would hear things like we we like we like new jersey ball players mm, wow yes and, and the, the, the statement was relative to pennsylvania and and new york state mm -hmm. okay um because uh they you know, we had the grit in their mind and uh, that had been their experience. And that was our experience. You know, we, we got old school coached. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, most definitely. And I know, um, and that still stays around to this day too. I mean, when you're talking about high school football, Jersey's right in the thick of things with the Pennsylvanians, Ohio's and California. Jersey's like not too far below, if far below at all. Like, I mean, it's, it's just crazy. Just like you turn somebody from Jersey is being rep some somebody being represented by somebody from Jersey. Absolutely. And, you know, and now you look at Rutgers uh, and say, Hey, let's keep these homeboys home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a, that's a big to do, especially when you think about Rutgers in, in, in the past though, though they kept a the majority of people, those big names was getting away. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm very happy to see, uh, you know, Rutgers and, you know, my dad used to always go see what a good friend of his, the Princeton games down at Palmer Stadium. Uh, so uh, even as an adult, he he just loved football and had the yeah. opportunity to to see it at various levels. Hmm. And of course, I'm a second generation Giants fan. Yeah. No, no, no. Definitely good times with the Giants. It'll get back to it. They'll definitely get back to it. Indeed. Yeah. This, um, this playing sports, like, what, what has it? What stuck with you 
throughout your time, you know, on the athletic ground that, that you carry with you to this day? Well, um, the most, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, keep pushing. Mm -hmm. yes. Keep pushing. You know, you could be working on a problem at work and your, your mind kind of goes back doing those ups and downs. And so I can't do it. I can't do another one, but then you do it and you do it and you wind up doing 25 more, you know, you just got to convince yourself that, uh, Hey, I can get to that goal line. And, uh, and, and, you know, I did it in that venue and that mindset carries, has carried through with me, mm -hmm. uh, through, through, through the years, mm -hmm. um, the, the teamwork. Okay. Uh, how one or two people can carry the squad emotionally um, as a leader. What's the definition of a leader? Well, my experience was a quarterback, mm -hmm. right? And uh, in the working environment, I became the quarterback in a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And had to keep everybody else motivated and, and uh, learned. And, uh, you know, uh, sometimes, you, you know, had to criticize for the right reason, uh, only to, you know, make sure that they're successful. Um, yeah, so that was the uh, first thing that comes to mind. Wow, and, and it's interesting as far as even, so recent, though recently retired, you, you, you're still back at it. You got another thing in mind. I mean, um, I know when we spoke over the phone, you back get, how things come full yeah. circle in some ways, it just opportunity to get back and, and, and teach. And as far as students here, I, Looking forward to that? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Um, substitute teaching, the whole COVID thing. Uh, you know, I, I uh, obviously there's a need for men of color in, in the field, uh, in the inner city. And, you know, I, I felt that uh, I want to do it in the Newark school system. Um, I'm just waiting for my uh, Fed and state security clearance to, you know, from the fingerprint um, test or take. Uh, to come through and uh, pass that on and then, uh, you know, uh, find a school that uh, will uh, need me. Um, and uh, that's, that's it, it, it does a couple of things for me. It does, it's a payback element, give okay. back element. And um, I mean, I, that's, it fits my lifestyle for mm -hmm. now. Fortunately, it, it, it allows me, to, our lifestyle allows me to do that. Yes. In my, and in I, my heart, in my heart. <laughs> I about to say, you know, definitely your heart. And, and to your point here, you know, especially that population, they see somebody that look like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am um, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Like I said, I, I, I didn't give Marcus and Matthew all my stardust. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, I can't give I, it all away. Yeah. I can find, you know, I, I got enough to sprinkle, sprinkle more on some heads and hopefully uh, be a positive role model for them, for them. No, nah, definitely. I mean, that, that that's great here. And I think, um, and then your love for music too is starting to, you know, uh, be a big deal as well too. Uh, the, the project you have going on. Well, you've, you've done your research. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why, you know, I appreciate what you're doing because uh, I find joy. Uh, I'm not doing it for anything, but the, the joy of, of, you know, keeping my mind going with studying, finding an artist, researching the artist. Uh, obviously selecting of their repertoire, the songs that I like, because I know that uh, if I like it, I have to assume that other people will. And um, matter of fact, I've been doing it for the last year or so. And uh, this weekend, I'm cataloging all the, uh, all the episodes that I've done, the Sunday solstice, I call it. As a matter of fact, my son, I don't know if you can see this, but for Christmas, he bought me one of those professional mic booms because he wants me to say you should turn this into a podcast so definitely, uh de no, definitely so uh yeah i guess i pushed him and now he's pushing me to take it to the next level <laughs> nah and that's exciting and to your point here just the joy of it you know he wasn't looking for anything else it's just a, something that you enjoy doing well what happens too uh because people know what lane i'm in and i'm in all lanes i mean i've done jazz blues r&b um the whole the whole you know, the domestic artists, uh, artists, uh, 
Iranian, uh, UK, you know, uh, African, Africa, uh, all over. Uh, New Zealand, a New Zealander. I mean, this talent all over the world. So it broadens the perspective of music that you wouldn't hear on, on WBLS or, or uh, BGO. Uh, but, uh, and I, I find that people will drop me a line saying, check this artist out and I'll check them out and I'll research them. And uh, if it works for me, I'll make a episode of it. So um, you give and that's my receive. People send me things and uh, they jump on board in my lane. Yeah, definitely. And with music, I mean, music's soundtrack of our lives here. You, you can hit, there's certain music for every, pretty much every emotion. Yes. I had a friend that said, uh, I just posted my recent one yesterday because I was done with it early. And because um, I knew I was going to be doing this, this usually I do it on Sunday mornings. And uh, my friend said, I listened to the first one. I'll catch I'll catch the rest of it tomorrow morning, meaning this morning, as I look out the window, looking at the snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, nah, 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 that's great. Here, man. I mean, and I think it's just sounds like what you what you've done. Just always stay busy and even now having a more of opportunity to do some things that you that you truly enjoy I'm not saying you didn't enjoy others but what you truly enjoy on your time when you want to do it you know it's no clock you know clock time or you know you having to get things done yes mm. yes indeed 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 mm. now i know um you know i appreciate i appreciate the time here you got a few more minutes for me oh yeah 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 i'm good cool. i'm good yeah just uh wanted to ask some random questions here if you i mean so Get some honest answers, and have some fun. Tip me, we could push the humble pie to the side a little bit for a couple of them. Uh, so, uh, you good to go? I'm good. Cool, cool. So, uh, we're driving on Jersey guy. We we're driving Parkway to Turnpike. Oh, Parkway. Parkway. Um, it's a beautiful ride. Mm -hmm. Beautiful ride. Mm -hmm. Cadillac or Lincoln? <laughs> that's my that that's that's, a, that's, that's, that. that's my that's my night. I have a 1961 Coupe de Ville. Ooh, that's <laughs> that's, that's the uh, the fins. I don't know if you could. Yeah, I guess you could probably. See oh no, it. we can see. No, we can yeah, see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Cadillac. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now. That's your summer, baby. You drive it during the summer, maybe a couple yeah. times. Yeah, I do. Yeah, on the weekends only. Right now, I have it stored uh, down in Trenton, but I'll bring it up uh, when the weather turns. Nah, uh, that's all right. That, that's that's <laughs> me. That's, that's um, Springdale or Prospect? Springdale or Prospect? Right. No, no reason. Whatever reason you want to. Uh, I'll say up. I'll say Springdale because. Uh, a, a memory of Springdale is, uh, that's right at the corner is, there's a corner right at the corner of Springdale and North Clinton. North Clinton runs parallel to Prospect was Carvel Ice Cream. Right, yes. <laughs> so, so back in the day, you know, you walk from games, the line going to Carvel, or if we were sitting on the porch and my dad says, uh, you guys want ice cream? Mm -hmm. And we'd all take a walk to the corner. So that's a very, very fond memory. Yep, Springdale. Now you just spawned a memory for me. You mentioned Carvel's. To this day, they still have buy one get a Sunday free on Wednesdays. This is oh, really? it. I, this is yeah. This is <laughs> I go back to when I'm a kid. Like to this day, they still have that deal every Wednesday. So once in the blue, I treat myself. Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, playground best playground that uh, you played in uh, growing up. Like was Ashland. Your, I won't say best favorite. Maybe your favorite. I'd say I'd say Ashland. Uh, that uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, Ashland is is where the I used to walk through it every day to go to grammar school, mm -hmm. and uh, there was an article that I that triggered a memory from way way back. Back in the '60s, there was stage coaches, you know, model mm -hmm. stage coaches, like little houses, but there were stage coaches. And uh, when I saw that article that somebody pulled up from somewhere posted it just took me right back as a kid playing on the swings you know my sister and I would would walk home and walk to school together because we were we were twins and we would always give it about five or ten minutes on the swings and and you know running around the stage coaches to uh get that energy up and then to continue on home 
no, no. Nah, nah. I, I know I, I know for a fact that a lot of your audience would say Elmwood. Uh, oh, a lot of the, the basketball <laughs> players, yeah, a lot of yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, that yeah, um, going to the nightclub or a block party. Ah, uh, didn't go to many block parties um, back home. We have block parties here, but I think we're you're talking about home. I'd have to say backyard barbecue. All right, definitely, definitely. family family backyard uh, barbecue, uh, which I'll kind of like be a little flexible and say a block party. Um, backyard barbecue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you start at a certain time, and there was no no end in sight. That's right. All the all the folks, and you had your aunts that had their uh, favorite dish. You you can bank on Aunt Ethel making greens. You can make uh, my aunt Dora making corn pudding, things like that. Yep, yep. <laughs> nah, definitely. What did you love being? What did you love most, being a kid or an adult? Wow. Hmm. I um. both i i mm. and that's on me mm -hmm. right um both mm -hmm. both i'm still writing my book yeah you know yeah and mm -hmm. and uh i i still uh you know i have chapters that cover the early days i have uh, chapters that covered my formative years but I, I got chapters that um are yet to write and, I, and i'm hoping that they'll be as uh as uh, rewarding as what my past has been. So I, I, it's seamless, mm -hmm. seamless. Not afraid, not afraid of, uh, Clifford Scott or Mockler State. Wow. Um, Clifford Scott, and that takes nothing away from Mockler State. I had mm -hmm. a great time in Montclair State. It, that was my springboard into corporate America. It was the opportunity that I had to uh, be a, a resident assistant uh, mm -hmm. in the dormitory to, uh, you know, manage these guys that were coming in from all backgrounds. You know, I remember one time I was, uh, me and the other RAs were standing in front of the dormitory during registration and freshmen were coming up and there was one kid with his mom and dad and uh and they were kind of flustered and said where, where do we go to register and I, I said uh we need to register i said well did you did you pre-register he said no no mm. we missed it so he he had he had no schedule mm. no schedule mm. so i said listen uh i, I excused the parents <laughs> and said me and him have to go down to the gym and we got to build him his first semester of courses and uh you know, I just kind of stood him with him in line and said, okay, you need this course, you need this course, you got to get this out of the way. And um, of course, he had to take some night classes because all the day classes were taken. But I said, listen, uh, you're coming in behind the eight ball, but let's get you straight. And uh, that was a very, very, the fact that I'm talking about it now was something that, uh, uh, you know, just like Art told me that he can, I can study under him to get my teaching. This was my moment to uh, pass it forward to uh, help this kid. So the whole mindset of, you know, helping each other, and uh, and he he and I just checked each other out during his career at Montclair State. I think he remembered that day as much as I do, and we always had that special relationship. Yeah, and no, for that to stick out even to this day, that says something. Yeah, yeah, definitely says something. Now, as far as um, best game you ever played in your life that sticks out? Best game I ever played uh, was probably against uh, uh, Orange. I was a, uh, I was a tight end. Uh, we had William Harris as a, uh, a halfback. So we were pretty much a running team, mm -hmm. um, off tackle. Uh, and um, I had a good blocking game. And um, I, I became, uh, you know, captain of the next week that of that game. Uh, later on in life, at church, uh, this guy comes up to me and uh, said, "You played for Scott, right?" And I said, "Yeah." I said, uh, 
we played one time and you kicked my behind <laughs> and it was that game because um, he was a guy that was playing tackle and my my mission was to always come down on him uh so um yeah that was the rules that's one that sticks out in my mind nah nah good stuff good stuff and best team you ever been on best team that i've ever been on Well, it was the best team, but the most memorable team that I have been on was uh, when I played JV ball. The coach had a relationship with the uh, West Point, the Army Academy. Mm -hmm. And we went up to uh, West Point uh, to scrimmage, uh, to scrimmage them and to roll up on West Point. You know, it's like amazing to see the uh, cadets doing their due diligence very nice, very uh, nice. phys physically and uh, just to watch them. And, and uh, you know, they uh, we ate at their hall mm -hmm. and the tradition, the architecture, uh, the discipline. Yes. Um, and uh, I was playing defensive end and these guys aren't necessarily big, but they are solid. Right. And uh, I remember one time I had a quarterback blitz where I'm like shooting right for that quarterback and I hit him and this guy was like a stone wall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know? Mm. Um, yeah. So that, that was my, that was a, an opportunity for me to just see, you know, outside of the norm college experience, you know, to go up there and um, we lost. Okay. But that wasn't the point, um, you know, in, in me picking uh, West Point. Nah, nah. I mean, a whole lot of reasons. I could totally see that. I could definitely see that. Now, as far as um, your top five, top five athletes in your in your high school era, you did anybody come to mind? Just kind of like, oh yeah, yep. John Callaway. Mm -hmm. Um, went on went on to play for Bucknell. Okay. Uh, William Harris. Uh, went on to play for the Virginia Cavaliers. Yeah. Um. Um, Johnny and Michael Moore, they were twins. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, one was a quarterback and one was a, a, a fullback, a halfback. Mm -hmm. um, one more. One more. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give, um, I'll, I'll give, um, Bobby Curtis. Okay. I'll give Bobby Curtis. He was our quarterback. Mm -hmm. we, we, we did well. We did well. Uh, he was, uh, he was, he was, you know, Scott, Scott, you know, if I, was Gary, Gary graduated in 1970 and I graduated in 1974. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you were to look at my brothers, you know, and, and East Orange was in transition, you know, 280, was being was was almost being completed. I think it got done in 1972. It opened up. Uh, you know, East Orange was in transition. And uh, if you look at the number of blacks in my brother's graduating class, and you look at the number of whites in my graduating class, it almost it almost took a, a 360. And you know what? The the transition, the, the dynamic of all that. I think everybody would say they had a great experience in East Orange. I think it was a great city to grow up in, in, and it was a great high school environment in the midst of change. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby was white, but who cared, you know? And I believe we had games. We were playing some of the North schools on the line. There was a lot of trash being talked, you know, across the lines. Uh, but it was not an individual thing. It was a, a, a team. Don't mess and you mess with me. You mess with all of us. Right. And uh, Bobby led the team and uh, he was a good QB. I don't know whether or not he went on to play anywhere else, but uh, total, total respect. And I'll, I'll put him in my top five. Nah, nah, nah. Good stuff. Here. Is this somebody, somebody who should have made it? Like, how do you define made it? Is it somebody that should have made it? 
you know, I should ask, I, I should add my brother to that list. Okay. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. um, somebody should have made it that didn't. Uh, I, I, I didn't follow many of the guys who were older than me, uh, the guys that uh, were also good. Uh, Colin Rock. Um, I mentioned Johnny and Michael. Um, Skip Perry had high potential. Um, you know, some, some of the guys fell, mm -hmm. you know, due to issues, you know, just, just, you, you saw them later on in life and you said, wow, how did that happen? Um, um, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. No, nah, um, understandable. Yeah, uh, I understand. What's the uh, best part about being you? Well, my wife calls me a talker. That's it. <laughs> um, my, my, my kids and a lot of their friends uh, call me Uncle Phil. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I have that uh, I, I, fresh Prince of Bel Air attitude. Now I know you talk about, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, where, where, you know, I, I treat my boys, uh, my guys, you know, like adults, but I joke with them just like anybody else, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and they joke with me. And, uh, you know, so we had a very, we have a very um, um, beautiful relationship. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some, some of it is, is using the skill sets from work, bringing home to, you know, mold people and I, I think i've done a good job of doing that and they're they're, they're great guys i mean I, I say that because they're mine but i've had enough people tell me that these guys are are fantastic and they really are they're very caring um they're just they're, they're stand-up guys uh and uh um you know i what's good about me is a tough one to say about myself but uh i think uh, my wife calls me an open book Okay. And I don't think that has hurt me. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, nah, definitely. Definitely. Um, speaking of best, uh, you probably have had many, many of them, but uh, what's three of the best moments that stick out to you in your life? Um, meeting my wife. Mm. Yeah. Hearing, <clears throat> uh, take your time. Caring, caring for my dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a uh, we, had, <clears throat> we had a great had a great ten year ten year run. Had a great life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if you have the ability to uh, convince the grandparent to spend time with the kids or convince the kids to spend time with the grandparent, uh, it's, it can be a beautiful thing. Mm. Uh, you know, my, my son, my youngest son has a tattoo of my mom on his chest. Okay, okay. My other son has a, tattoo of my dad a picture that i took sitting in the bleachers watching a game with his short white socks and shorts and a t-shirt with a can of coke and a hot dog he took that picture and gave it to a guy and had that put on his uh body i can't remember where it is on his body um as a, as a tattoo um so my, my wife and, and my boys my boys i don't know how many times how many how many you want, but uh nah, that, was, that was three. That was three. Okay. That was, nah, that was three. Nah, nah. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, you talked about books and chapters of your life and not done yet. So with this book here, if it was a the book on your life, as you kind of talked about a little bit indirectly here, what would you call it? <clears throat> um
Wow. Um, uh, wow, man. My life, my journey. My life, my journey. Mm -hmm. um, my life, my journey, and I got to be a leave behind. Uh, my wish, <laughs> and and let let the people see the kind of figure what it, that would be. Uh, it's, and it's interesting you say you mentioned the my life part even earlier when we were talking. Um, when you left Northeastern, you know, your dad said it was it was your life. You basically, you know, in regards to, you know, leaving school, what have you. Yeah. So it's just interesting, um, kind of you mentioned that my life would be part of that title there. Well, well, yeah, well, you know, this, this, he he worked three jobs, mm -hmm. you know, and the tuition, tuition was, uh, you know, pretty hefty. You know, Northeast, yeah, like no the largest, yeah. La yeah, largest private school in the country it was back then, and and. Uh, you know, he, he, uh, you know, so, you know, you got to find your own groove, you know, mm -hmm. I always say that you can, you know, college, college, a high school graduate, you know, Hey, go away, check it out. See if you like it. You can always come back home, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and, um, yeah, that was his attitude. Uh, there was no drama, you know, mm -hmm. uh, he was that kind of guy. You know, he yeah. was, uh, he was, uh, that kind of guy, uh, yeah. very patient, very understanding, uh, looked at the big picture, uh, you know, don't, don't make, uh, don't make short-term decisions. Uh, what's the saying? Don't make, uh, don't, don't, don't make rash short-term decisions that'll affect you in the long run. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, my life. And, uh, and my wish is that, uh, you know, my life has impacted, uh, those who I touched. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I definitely, definitely, definitely. And, uh, my last one here, as far as, um, uh, at this point in your life, what would this John, what advice would you give that 17, 18 year old senior high school, John, what advice would you give him? Well, I, I would say, um, I would I would say I try to catch them when they're 14 to go see your guidance counselor. Mm -hmm. uh, let get to know that person. Don't be that person who when you're a senior in high school and it's the first time you just talk to those that are there to help. Um, the the uh, so I'll say that mm -hmm. uh, I, I always say that, uh, you know, uh, use your resources when they're available to you. And uh, the guidance counselors, for example, are there from your freshman, sophomore junior year uh, and senior year. Uh, my advice to a high school graduate is um, go with your gut. Go with your gut. Uh, challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, know your support system or develop a support system. Let yourself yes. Let yourself be free to ask, uh, present yourself well, uh, you know, um, have a goal, uh, you know, uh, people will recognize that mm -hmm. and people will help you. Okay. Um, yeah. Be, be yeah. kind, be kind, mm -hmm. be kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, well, well said. I mean, um, John, I just wanted to say thank you as far as just the opportunity here, as far as you talked about hopefully impacting people's lives throughout your, you know, your journey, you continue to live here. Just even this little bit of time here. I mean, I know we spoke a little bit beforehand, but just to do what you want to do and have the joy of doing it, like stuff you're doing now, like tells me like that should be done whenever possible throughout everybody's entire life here. But even outside of that, I just want to thank you for just sharing, you know, whether it was, you know, talking about your boys, you know, your wife, you know, even, you know, your dad, just everything here. I appreciate this time here. Like, I just really, truly say thank you. And you just never know who you meet in your life here. And I know for me, you know, doing this, I've 
people such as yourself I met that I've never met. Like, you know, just <laughs> like, wow, I'd love to continue to just maybe once in the blue pick up the phone or what have you. Because, I mean, it's just I, I truly, truly enjoy this time with you. I, I appreciate that. I do have I want to leave you with something and I'm going to you can message me your uh, your 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 address. Um, this uh, this is uh, something that my wife put together for the Hobart football team in 19 in, in 2014. And uh, Bear Bryant used to carry a poem in his pocket. And when mm -hmm. he passed away, his uh, his family found that poem. And it was known to look at that poem all the time. And I want to read it to you. And uh, because I see you uh, in these words. OK. This is the beginning of a new day. God has given me this day to use as I will. I can waste it or use it for good. What I do today is very important because I'm exchanging a day of my life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever, leaving something in its place. I have traded for it. I want it to be good. I want it to be a gain, not loss. Good, not evil. Success, not failure, in order that I shall not forget the price I paid for it. I keep Thank this in my wallet. I keep I keep a few of these in my wallet, you know, for those people that I come across. And uh, I just want to share that point because I, I know that they'll appreciate it. And I'll I'll get this to you. No, no, definitely. And thank you for sharing that too. Definitely. You're welcome. Uh, you be well. And um, like I said, um, I'll reach out on, on the back end offline here to get that and any other jewels or advice that I can <laughs> that I can get out of you here. So no, nah, thank you very thank you so much, John. Be well, man. All right, now nah, take care. Appreciate you. Wow. Yeah. Get these moments from doing this here, whether it's the individuals I'm speaking with or just even me myself here, just the jewels and knowledge, just just soaking it up and just have an opportunity to, to do so. One of the reasons I do this here, with that being said, though, I'm just I'm gonna step off and be in touch. I put my hand over my heart. That means I feel you. Yeah. 